Hello again. This is the fourth video on the European, that I've called the European Union series. Um, I, I'd like to continue on from where I left off by looking at the European Union Treaty of Maastricht, which was signed on the 1st of November 1993. Actually, that's wrong. It, it was signed in 1992, but it came into force as law uh, from in 19. Uh, 93. What it was actually was a, a, a treaty of amendments to other treaties to do with enlargement and it was only after that time that the European Union was allowed to expand and become bigger and all, all of the um, its, it, it, its, its th threads if you like started to weave a picture of a more total and complete union spreading uh, uh, all, all the way over Europe. And as we explored in the other picture, uh, in the other uh, video, Europe itself is ruler as Taurus because it represents the bull. And Europa uh, is named after Europa, which means broad land. Uh, but it is represented by a feminine deity who rides the beast. And one version of Taurus is, of course, money and uh, economic union. Um, but the problem with empires the problem with expanding empires even though they may start off and have uh, consequential beneficial effects uh, what happens is eventually it, it runs from a, 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 a centralized core a kind of bureau of people but um, the, the people at the bottom if they can't climb to the top of a hierarchy you see that's when the hierarchy becomes too big now I got that idea from Jordan Peterson who um, has a, had a little look at the uh, theme of the Tower of Babel or Tower of Babel which was a, uh, a, a Christian uh, story in the uh, Old Testament about a building that was brought into existence I believe that um, it was uh, Nimrod or it seemed to be uh, Nimrod who 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 suggested that mankind or this particular um, uh, people build a, a temple or build a building which would eventually reach into the heavens reach above the clouds and so that one could ascend this and uh, and achieve a, a higher purpose or to to be able to create something in the world which could strive to which could lead towards God and uh, this whole word of God, or, uh, or however we conceive of it as a, a, a divine entity, is one. Uh, Paul Teller called God the all-creative, creative principle in life. Um, indeed, there is a creative element, creativity itself. If you... Uh, uh, more interested in kind of holistic or Jungian theory, God would be seen as an image within us and a process within us moving towards a totality, to moving towards wholeness of some kind, a kind of perfected universe that the alchemists worked on in their laboratories and that Jung took over actually so that we can try and work on our own psyches as a, uh, as a way of uh, alchemizing, as a way of transforming the individual psyche into a, into a body and mind complex, which can then um, uh, manifest and uh, communicate and uh, the, the, this image of wholeness that, that we're all seeking, a kind of divine work to become whole in oneself. Indeed, this concept of wholeness and a, a totality of consciousness, for example, in the Advaita tradition, the non-dual reality, which is the ground of all consciousness, not the different senses, not the different bits and pieces, not just the mind, but, but some um, uh, a feeling that the ground of consciousness itself can be contacted. And that once we're in contact with this, everything else is put in its place including the ego and the body and the psychic realms and the subtle realms and you know, all the realms to do with energy. They're all kind of placed in, a, in, a, um, in, in an enlightened state within an individual. Very few people have attained this level of consciousness, this ultimate consciousness. 
And there are various divisions about it um, in, in different theologies and different uh, systems. But one thing that they can all agree on is that um, there is this um, profound sense of uh, divinity or a, a, a transformational state beyond the level of the ego and the individual. And this is why the Tower of Babel uh, um, was deemed to be or thought to be um, a, a problem because the ego alone cannot construct enough uh, processes or purposes or, or come up with enough things in order to achieve a, a, a status of uh, divinity or uh, sainthood. Or even uh, in, in occultism, it would be the magus or the obsessimus, which is a kind of walking with God, which is a, a process of walking with the divinity within oneself and the feeling as if the universe is flowing through the individual. And there's a kind of affinity without the destruction of the individual, as I was talking about last time. These concepts are all rather metaphysical, but the Tower of Babel is an interesting one because it is reflected also in the building at Strasbourg. Now there are plenty of conspiracy theorists on, on, online about this, um, but th there nevertheless is a connection between the two because the building of Strasbourg, which is the European Parliament, was actually designed through, um, uh, designed on a picture uh, uh, composed in, uh, I think it was 1500 somewhere, by Pieter Bruegel. And he created this structure, this, this building called the Tower of Babel. Now the story is simple. The building was constructed and God in um, his divine wisdom, his or her divine wisdom, um, decided that, um, that he, he, everybody spoke in one voice. It was kind of a unified feel, but in order to um, not let mankind think that they could construct something themselves rather than inviting or surrender themselves. You see, in the mystical tradition, the self is not, you don't build up something. You, 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 you don't work through grades or, 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 or whatever particularly, but in the end, you surrender to a higher purpose, which then you become a channel of. Although you might work towards it with various forms of meditation and, I mean, the Hindu tradition has various levels of consciousness, the um, same as uh, Zen Buddhism, in different grades of understanding and different grades as the mind moves beyond different stages. Uh, and this was all um, seen in the, um, what was it, Dionysus the Era, I hope again, and the, the, the Christian traditions with the various levels of the angels and the archangels and the cherubims and the seraphims and so on. A heaven was structured and then eventually you moved on. Um, in the Renaissance period it would be to, to, to achieve a, a, a unification in a way or a, an, an awareness of the divine fire itself beyond all creation, which is the Empyrean. I could wax lyrical on about that, but the point is that the Tower of Babel was in a way cursed by God because you can't build up something too so large or from the efforts alone of the individual ego. Some other process within oneself must be um, brought into a communion with the, 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 the ego. It's the philosophy used to call it the higher self, but I don't think that explains it. Um, this, the, this sense of a, of a divinity in oneself, one, uh, in any religious or, or spiritual sense, one starts to build up a process of, of, of developing this co connection. And then the ego is infused or uh, shown by something else, some this larger process of wholeness or divinity or, or God within us. And then that in itself starts to um, permeate through the, the lens of the individual psyche and psychology. Now I'm going to bring this um, picture up here. I uh, hope we can uh, share it. Um, uh, it's on my screen, but it's uh, probably not on on the screen yet. So um, let me see if I can do this. I, I'm a little unfamiliar with this whole sharing process, so let me just get this on screen here. Here it is. 
I hope that we can all see this now. Now, I'm showing you this because it relates to the horoscope of the Maastricht Treaty, or at least my fantasy believes it has, and I'm not going to go into it too much detail, but it is well known that the building at Strasbourg, which is the European Parliament building, it was built, uh, was designed on the Tower of Babel, and you can see it's incomplete work here. Um, down here, there's the ships at sea, and um, they're delivering goods and, the, and bricks and so on. And all these, if you go into it in detail, it's, it's, there's an amazing detail in it. And there's um, some say that this is a, a spiral upwards rather than just a series of stages. Now, over here is uh, Nimrod himself come to inspect the works, and over here are the workers chipping away at various bits and pieces um, in order to make the building work. Now, it's incomplete, and uh, what happened was that God saw that uh, it was an attempt by man to uh, work his own way towards heaven without divine grace or without divine help, and so he struck them with many tongues. In other words, um, they because they spoke in one tongue, they could all communicate together, but the many tongues was a further differentiation of humankind. And that's the word babble. And the word babbling, of course, is to just, just go on and on. I do it sometimes. Um, but um, that's where it comes from. But Jordan Peterson believes that this structure here, this superstructure, which is a, an attempt to um, replace God in a way, or replace the the need to surrender to a, a divine or, or, or more um, uh, powerful purpose within oneself, um, you, what Jung could, would say is the, the listening into one's deep psyche for the instructions of the self, which is uh, reaching towards wholeness. Uh, instead of doing this ourselves, buildings or structures like this can get too big for the human ego to take. And what, what he was saying was that um, if, if a hierarchy like this, a hierarchy of structure and order, if the top cannot be reached by one person at the bottom, then it becomes a monstrosity. It becomes a kind of monolithic, monolithic idea of which the top is unreachable from the bottom because certain people can't reach it. And, um, and this is like it in democracy. A local democracy can vote out the people at the top and theoretically one can climb to the top no matter how low one has started on the bottom rung. It's difficult, I grant you. But in the United States, um, uh, the great Capricorn, um, uh, Richard Nixon, the 37th president of the United States, was on that low rung and eventually moved his way towards the top to become the president. His story is a typical Capricornian story and a very interesting one, in, in my opinion. Although, as he climbed, of course, Richard Nixon uh, eventually found that um, one owes here, one owes there. And I think any climb up the greasy pole involves a kind of corruption of the personality. You need to be very strong in yourself, um, both morally and in, in a sense of completeness of your own psyche. Otherwise, uh, life at the top is uh, easily thrown off. Richard Nixon was undone by his own psychology rather than anything else. Now, this is a poster of the, uh, I believe it was from 1992, and this was a poster uh, drawn up to indicate um, uh, what the whole processes or the purpose of the European Union was about and to present it as, as something. And as you can see here, it's built on the Tower of Babel. You see, here it is. This is an this is a, 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 almost an exact replica of the Bruegel, and this, as you can see, is an un, so-called unfinished, on, and it's built on these towers. Now you can see here that the construction tower here on on the poster is um, is is trying to complete the work. So. What, was, what remained unfinished um, and uh, mankind having to do a, a, a lot of babble um, and, and so therefore not understandable. Now, babble means a, a confusion, a, a lack of clarity of mind and um, a lack of clarity of thought. 
Um, in this, the reconstruction started again, as if the European Union, in its humanistic secular idea, is trying to replace that massive tome of religious belief or religious institutions and replace it with its own form of it, a kind of empire a kind of ancient ziggurat of Babylon in some way. Now, there are, as I say, some conspiracy theorists which talk in very fundamentalist terms about it and all that business. And maybe they're right. Maybe um, this is all designed to be a big super state so that it can be um, uh, controlled, if you like, by uh, the five great big corporate masses, which will then have uh, power over the people and achieve all the wealth. That's what um, unfortunate hierarchies do. But you see, this is designed as a secular humanistic as, um, uh, overarching state uh, with an attempt to bring peace to mankind. But you can see who are building here. These are the ordinary builders over here. And I don't know why it was said, but if you can see Europe, many tongues, one voice is a, is a turnabout, you see, because we were speaking in one voice and then God kind of cursed uh, or, or you know, decided that that wasn't good. So created Babel. That's why it was called the Tower of Babel or from Babylon. And uh, now it speaks in one voice through the many tongues. But you can see a secular constructed uh, 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 a monolithic um, uh, structure of the European Union. This is uh, designed, as I say, as the city of Strasbourg there, the European Parliament building with the block heads over here. Uh, these heads are all block stone. They're, they're constructing, they're, they've, they're all kind of chipping away at their, their own particular part of it to build this um, edifice. Now, the only one that isn't um, a square head is the uh, baby over here, which are the newborn, which of course are controlled and mothered and fathered through um, uh, uh, the blockheads. And blockhead is a short version of, of a person who is a clod or an imbecile or stupid person. They're all blockheads, blindly following the instructions of, of this, um, this, this ideal which could, of course, uh, have a sense of reaching a, a, a divine status, that, that, that those people at the top, those rule in the council there, uh, uh, and so on. Now, this has also to do with um, Europa, but I don't want to go into uh, that to do with the Queen of Heaven. But it is, remember, it's, it's basically a, um, I'm going to come out of that. Uh, remember, it's basically a, 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 a matriarchal state uh, ruled by Europa to do with the land and has uh, and was uh, a, a, a constructed in a way by a divine or greater purpose. And in the last, I'm going to bring up the chart of the uh, Union again here, the uh, chart. Um, and I'm going to share that. We can just... Here we go, and share. Here's the union chart, and as I said last time, the, um, the great emotional impetus to build this superstate uh, of Europe um, is, is largely based on a, a fanatical idea of, um, or one could say, uh, the, uh, uh, an idea based on a, a great vision of being great. Uh, and, and it's to do with uh, Saturn and uh, great big architectural structure and this, this kind of way of an attempt to unify all of the different structures, all of the different voices into a common bond of humanity through order and control. As long as everybody obeys the orders and everybody goes along in line with it. And I think that this is a very uh, deterministic, uh, paternalistic, maternalistic, strong, as I, 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 I image this uh, moon in uh, Taurus here as a kind of school, as a school mistress, a very, very strong person. But what I wanted to show here is this ideological dream of Uranus and Neptune in Capricorn, which I linked to, uh, which I linked to this picture 
because it's from the sea, if you remember. It is, is a kind of tall, important building. And Noel Till calls uh, Capricorn the sign of administrative control. So we have it here a secular, um, humanistic idea, because Uranus um, relates to humanism often, and science, and, and, and uh, political theory, systems theory, rather than any ideological, uh, uh, rather than any um, uh, religious or faith-oriented, it, it, it centers around facts, and the discovery of facts. But here is an attempt to reach an ideological utopia. Now, as we said, the last talk, Uranus is about to go over this, and Donald Tusk's chart, also interestingly enough, is, is around about, his sun and moon is around about three or four Taurus. But Pluto has been going across this too. And whenever you get a Pluto transit, you have something that comes out the basement, and what's been happening since Brexit, it was uh, here, Pluto was about 17 degrees in 2016. It was uh, 18, 19, ha hung around this position all of 2017. And 18, it was at 19. Uh, in December of 2018, it was still at 19 degrees. And then it's just moved away into 21, 22. And it's working its way towards this trine of Pluto. And then eventually it's been squaring this. And, it, and eventually it will square Jupiter. Now, this is a long transit of Pluto, and whenever you get a, a transit of Pluto, you get root and branch transformation. Um, I think that, uh, that the, it's probable that the European um, project will remain. It is, a, it is a vast attempt to unify a lot of nations, but it's have to go, it's have to go, going to go undergo reconstruction and some transformation with, with the, within. Because this, what's happened is that over the years, the, the aim of the European Union has the, 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 um, the deconstruction of the nation state, the, uh, as I said here with the sun in um, Scorpio, is something to do with the, the, the loss or the death of the individual nation states and the bringing together of them in, in a big whole. What you get with that is um, it's been done by stealth. It has been done by a, a kind of fraud and deception. Right from when I listened to those earlier things and all those people, all those people, um, uh, particularly Edward Heath and uh, I can't remember his name, a liberal, very famous liberal, um, he believed in this, and they all just kind of talked around the fears of being, the fears arising. And what's from being absorbed into something else in which you have no control? had no independent autonomy, that individual identities of cultures or religions would eventually be absorbed into this uh, melting pot of, 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 of non-differentiated identities. And this, this as I said, a, a kind of pie, a, a cake which doesn't taste of anything. So it's been done by stealth. It's been done under the radar. And in fact, there has been a deliberate attempt to, to uh, because people wouldn't go along with it. Even Jean, uh, Jean Monnet uh, in the 1950s talked about the need to conceal things, the to conceal the ultimate aim of the European Union under the banner of unitary, uh, unitary policy, money, uh, uh, the community and good deeds and uh, prosperity for all, and, and somehow conceal that because uh, they knew that it would be a cause for concern. So my concern is the way that it's been done. And anything that's done underneath the belt or close it from view, and then hopefully that we become so integrated by all the laws and regulations that it's too difficult to extract ourselves from. What's been happening is people have been duped to a large degree. And it's hoped that that baby with the round head, that they could be um, talked to by the blockheads and told that, don't worry, it's, it, it, you know, even though your head is round as it should be, eventually we'll turn it into a square. Um, so 
and so to become square is to become just straight and so uh, uh, you know unified a square is a person that it just abides by the rules and so so this pluto is going to for several years start to bring out all the toxins the poisons the the comments that haven't been said the underworld if you like of the european agenda and it's going to eventually bring it all out in the open and this has been what has been happening in europe lately uh, both in italy both in spain and in netherlands particularly hungary in austria poland have now refused to do things in 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 this country we have a strong powerful need just to withdraw from this uh, mighty edifice which will eat everything up in its path if you remember that this saturn here saturn is chronos and chronos ate his children uh, uh, because he could see that they were going to overthrow him now i haven't done much astrology here but point out what this pluto transit is and it's a transformation of this whole ideological dream and what pluto does is not necessarily destroy things utterly like the god of death uh, now remember when we're dealing with mythic images we're dealing with processes so if the european union can change can look at itself and be frankly as honest as it can be then this uranus coming up to approach its sun the very purpose it will be exposed and brought out and some new structures of thought or new philosophy will come to light. Uranus is a great light bringer, um, but it needs to disrupt the set structures as it's been going forward. And so I feel here that very soon, uh, during the course of the next couple of years, but particularly in May when, as I say, Uranus is around this three degree to five degrees, even three degrees at the end of the year, is stirring all of this up. And in 2020 here, I see it goes on to the eighth degree, which will oppose the sun. And so therefore, we will have a confrontation with itself, with its purpose, with its center of purpose. And I hope, uh, therefore, we will be able to have a, a fruitful and uh, truthful uh, discussion uh, uh, about what the project is for, what its good points are, what its bad points are, and so that we can have a logical, truthful, open and honest debate if it hadn't been, if this had been done right from 1975, if it hadn't gone underground, if we hadn't been duped by this treaty and that treaty, and things sm sm smothered over, you see this this moon, this uh, European project here is smothered over by this Neptune, kind of concealed, and oh, don't worry, we we'll, we'll just push it on. Well, now Uranus and Neptune are breaking apart. Neptune is still in a, in a collective sign of Pisces moving ahead towards fusion and in, is a kind of fused, suffused integration of, of, of one body with no differences. But Uranus is moving strongly into the sign of Taurus, breaking apart the economies and bringing, bringing together a, a sense of solidity, a solidity of purpose in those that oh, want to know what's going to happen to their unique identities. Well, I will stop there and uh, I'll wait for comments, uh, 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 perhaps, and maybe even continue on this conversation if people wish to. Thank you very much. Well, interestingly enough, the uh, it won't. It doesn't seem to be able to stop. 